this is Dr. Diana recording live from Cocoa Beach, Florida. This video is in honor of Theodore Seuss Cazell, a.k.a. Dr. Seuss. This week, all across the nation and even around the world, boys and girls, young and old alike, will be celebrating the birthday of Dr. Seuss, born March 2nd, 1904. This week, he would have been celebrating his 103rd birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Now, Dr. Seuss got his big first go in 1954 when an article was published in Life magazine all about the high illiteracy rate in boys and girls across the nation. Now, is Dr. Seuss's theory that the reason the boys and girls were so bored and weren't doing well in reading and were illiterate was because they had to read the Dick and Jane series. Read with Dick and Jane. Let's just look at one of the pages here. Oh, oh, see Dick. Oh, see Dick. Sally. You get the idea. Not too exciting. Dr. Seuss was working for Random House in the children's division, and his editor said, okay, Theodore, gave him 500 words, and he said, you write a children's book. Theodore spent nine months until he came up with writing the cat in the hat. The title of the book comes from the fact that the cat and the hat were the first two words that rhymed in the word list. The book ended up being 220 words in length. The third best-selling book in the English language is Green Eggs and Ham. And any time Dr. Seuss would be asked to speak, of course, what would they serve him? Green Eggs and Ham. He said he got quite tired of eating Green Eggs and Ham. Now today what we're going to do, though, is we're going to focus our attention on a book that's not so well known, titled Bartholomew and the Ublek, written in 1949. Bartholomew and the Ublek is written on Dr. Seuss's experiences he had as a cinematographer working in Europe during World War II. Every day the rain would come down and would mix in with the dirt, forming a mud-like substance. The soldiers would complain as they tromped through this mud-like substance. After the war, Dr. Seuss went back to California and came up with this book, Bartholomew and the Ublet. It's all about a king that wants it to rain, but he wants it to rain something different than rain. He gets his magicians together and what do his magicians concocture up? Ublet. And this town begins to be covered with Ublet, and it's quite a mess. And the moral of this story, like all of Dr. Seuss's books have a story and a moral, is be careful what you wish for. Now today we're going to make Ublet, which is a non-Newtonian fluid. Now what is a fluid, you might ask? A fluid is anything that has the ability to flow. Water flowing, ketchup flowing, and one of the characteristics of fluids is that they have a viscosity. And viscosity is the resistance to flow in a fluid. We can look at corn syrup, how it flows. Mayonnaise as it flows. And they all have a, a different resistance. They flow at a different rate. Now, in the 1600s, Isaac Newton came up with the law of viscosity. And it was first stated in the 1600s as a law that states that the viscosity of a fluid can only be changed by altering the fluid's temperature. And a perfect example of this is honey. Honey flows at this rate when it is cooled, and if you heat it up, it's going to cool, it's going to flow much quicker. That is a Newtonian fluid. However, a non-Newtonian fluid defies Newtonian, Newtonian principles by the fact that it does not only change its viscosity, its rate of flow, by temperature change, but it changes its viscosity by the force you apply to it. Now this is Ublek, which is a non-Newtonian fluid. It's made with cornstarch and water. It exhibits the characteristics of both a solid and a liquid. When I hold it in my hand, it flows like a liquid. And once we get it down into the bowl, and then I apply pressure to it, it behaves like a solid. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. It changes its rate of flow, its viscosity, based on an increase in temperature and also applied force. Now what is Ublek made with? Ublek is made with cornstarch and water. And I'm going to show you how to make your own Ublek at home. What we're going to do is we're going to take a cup of cornstarch to start off, a second cup, and cornstarch is a solid, powdery solid there. And we're going to add some H2O. We're going to add some water. And it's basically about a 2 to 1 ratio. It's more cornstarch than water. 
And just to go along with Barthon and the Ublek, I'm going to add some green food coloring to make it look a little more exciting. Again, Ublek is a non-Newtonian fluid. It's also an example of a colloidal suspension. It's also an example of a mixture. And it's an, also an example of a physical change. It's not a chemical reaction. And we're adding our water. All this is is cornstarch water and food coloring, Ublek, a non-Newtonian fluid. A fluid that changes its viscosity somewhat based on temperature, but mainly it changes its viscosity by applied force. And there we have our Ublek. And if you make Ublek properly, you should even be able to cut Ublek with a scissor as I'm going to do here. Ublek actually has the ability to be cut with a scissor. So, to wrap it up about Ublek, Ublek changes its rate of flow based on a pressure that's applied to it. When we hit it hard, it behaves like a solid. But when we place it in our hand and let it go, it behaves like a fluid. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. Not only does it change its rate of flow by temperature, but by applied force. It is an example of a physical change because if we leave Ublek overnight, we are going to be left, the water will evaporate, and what you're left with is only the cornstarch. We have not made a new substance. The water evaporates, we have the cornstarch left behind. Ublek is an example of a palmer, and in my last video, Diaper Science 101, I showed you Silly Putty, which is also an example of a non-Newtonian fluid, and I showed you Slime, another example of a non-Newtonian fluid, and you can see we can roll it into a ball, and then we let it go, it begins to flow. Again, two more examples of non-Newtonian fluids, Silly Putty and Slime. This video is in dedication to all the students and all the teachers I've met over the last 26 years, and I'd like to personally wish Dr. Seuss a happy birthday. And I'm just going to light these sparklers here. Just watch it up. Oops. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss.